In this presentation, we will focus on the next sub-language of SQL, the data control language. We know basically SQL has four different sub-languages. Number one, the data definition language DDL. Number two, the data manipulation language DML. Number three, data control language DCL. And number four, the transaction control language TCL. We are now going to focus on the data control language DCL. Before stepping into the data control language, I would like to give you a quick recap about the three-tier client-server architecture. Actually, this three-tier architecture is the predominant software architecture for traditional client-server applications. I mean, this three-tier architecture is a well-structured software application architecture. So what it is going to do is, it is going to organize the applications into three logical and physical computing tiers. For example, the first tier that user is going to interact is this level. Then comes the business logic, which is this level. Then comes the database logic, which is this level. Whatever user is going to interact is the presentation tier. Then comes the application tier and then comes the data tier. So we can say that there are three tiers where the client is going to interact with the application, which is the client tier or the presentation tier. Then comes the application server tier or the web server tier. And finally, the database server, which is the data tier. Now, why we want these three tiers? Because each tier can be developed simultaneously by separate development team. For effective utilization of the resources, what we can do is that we can have separate development teams to develop each tier simultaneously because each tier is going to run on its own infrastructure. And actually, these tiers can be scaled or updated without disrupting other tiers. For example, if any update is to be carried out on this level, that is the presentation tier, it need not be the case that other tiers will be affected. So we can scale or update tiers without affecting other tiers. When we talk about the presentation tier, where the client is going to directly interact with the presentation layer, which is the front end, we call this presentation level as a front end level, where user will be given with some GUI access, the graphical user interface. Let's take a real-time example. Suppose you want to withdraw some money. So you are going to ATM for withdrawing the money. When you go to the ATM, the screen, whatever you are seeing in order to access the system, that's the front end or that's the presentation tier. Or if you have an internet banking account and if you are logging into your bank website, then that's the presentation tier. Normally, these presentation tier are developed using HTML, CSS, JavaScript and other front-end development tools. And coming to the next tier, the application tier, and this is actually the middle or the logical tier, where the data, whatever is given by the presentation layer or the presentation tier are actually processed here. Say, for example, if you're going to your ATM machine and when you are inserting the card, if it is asking for username and password, the front end, that is this tier or the presentation tier is going to just collect the data from you. And all the processing of data are done by the business logic, which is this level, that is the application level. So in this level, the business logic and business rules are actually implemented. And what tools are here? We know in the presentation level, we have tools like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. What tools are there in this level? We have Python, Perl, Java, PHP, Ruby and many other business logic tools. We are done with the first two tiers. Coming to the important tier where the data are stored and managed, which is the database tier or simply the data tier where we have our DBMS here. And we know what this DBMS is going to do. It's going to store and retrieve the data effectively. And what tools are here? We have many database tools like MySQL, MariaDB, DB2, Informix, Microsoft SQL Server, etc. So this is the client server architecture. Why we are dealing about this three-tier architecture in data control language? We have a reason for this because when we talk about the generalized DBMS three-tier architecture, the bottommost layer will be the database where it is at the internal level then we have the conceptual level, then comes the view level. We have already seen about this in the introduction of this subject. Now, why we want this? Let's take a real-time example. You are going to a bank. Let's assume there are 50 employees working in the bank. All 50 employees are definitely able to provide you assistance. Say you have a query regarding your bank account or you want to know what's your account balance. And you can approach any of the bank employees in order to know the details. It's not for every employee a separate copy of your data is provided. 
all the data will be stored in a centralized place. I mean all the data are stored in a single location which is the database level. At the same time, not all employees will be able to provide you with the assistance with all the requests that you are providing. Say, a normal teller will have a lesser privilege than a clerk. A clerk will have a lesser privilege than assistant manager. An assistant manager will have lesser privilege than manager. A branch manager will have lesser privilege than the regional manager. Our data are actually stored at a central place and not all users are given with all equal privileges. Each user will be having a set of defined privileges. Say in our case, a teller will be having least privilege when compared to the regional manager. But whatever they are accessing, it's coming from the same location. That is, data is stored in the same place or in a single location and whoever wants to access the data, roles and privileges are assigned accordingly. So at the view level, we may have n number of views. And that is why I am mainly focusing on explaining the three-tier architecture. When you go to ATM and when you insert your card, only your data is retrieved. Let's say another person goes to the ATM and he inserts his card, he will be able to retrieve his own data. So what I mean to say is, at the user level or at the view level, there will be multiple views. Similarly, not all users are given with the equal privilege. So privileges or authorization is defined accordingly. With this knowledge, let's now step into the topic of the day, the data control language DCL. So data control language is the database administrator's tool to provide authorization. I mean, who can access what? Though the data is stored in a central location, the database, we are required to define who can access what. So this language DCL deals with the rights, permissions and other controls over the database. And obviously, they does not have the feature of rollback. I will talk about this rollback option elaborately in the next lecture because when we talk about the transactions at that time, I will explain you what is rollback commit and save point. So let's see the various commands in DCL. We are going to address two important commands in DCL. Number one, the grant and number two, the revoke. As the name suggests, to grant some rights or permissions, we can go for grant command. To revoke the rights, we can go for revoke. Let's now first focus on the grant command. When we talk about the grant command, the syntax is grant privilege name on object name to user. The syntax is so simple. We will see some examples. It will be easy for you to understand. I'm going to grant the select privilege on student table. Can you see here the table, the object here that I am referring is student to the username is Rahul. If someone logs into the database with the username Rahul, then what does it mean? Rahul will be able to do select operation only on student table. Suppose if we have a table like this, this is the student table and Rahul is the user. With Rahul credentials, Rahul will be able to only apply select query. I mean select star from student or select ID comma name from student or select simply ID from student. So this is only permitted as far as this particular command or this particular grant privilege is concerned. Now let's see how to give more privileges to the user Rahul. If I want to provide more privileges, I can simply give the privilege name by separating with a comma. Please see here, grant select comma update on student to Rahul, where select and update are the privileges and student is the name of the table that I am referring, which is the object here. After two, this is the user. What do we mean by this? When we have the student table, so Rahul can update the table as well as select and retrieve the data present in the table. As I mentioned, you can use comma for mentioning more privileges. Please see this example. Select comma, update comma, delete comma, insert comma, alter comma, all on student to Rahul. So I am giving almost all privileges to the user Rahul. So Rahul can do all these operations on this object which is the student table. We are done with the grant DCL command. Now let's focus on the revoke. The name itself says that after granting the privilege, if you don't want that particular user to have that privilege, what the database administrator can do? He can revoke the privilege. So the syntax goes like this. Revoke the keyword privilege name on object name from user. To grant, we use to user. For revoking, we use from user. Let's see an example. Revoke select comma update on student from Rahul. So what do we mean by this? When there exists a table like this, Rahul will not be able to do select or update anymore on this table. 
because the administrator has revoked these rights from Rahul. So in this presentation, we have seen about the three-tier architecture and the DCL commands grant and revoke. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.